All right, uh, while the result is obvious, you'd be surprised how well you would actually do. Of course, Finland is carrying, though. Four Nordic countries, one military superpower, tens of thousands of active Scandinavian army troops versus hundreds of thousands of Russians. Would Russia's 3,000 tanks fare well in the snow, and would its five times larger air force crush the defenders? Perhaps it would be another winter war, where Finland ultimately lost but badly bruised the Soviets, or maybe Russia would steamroll over its northern neighbors. Watch the video to find out. Binkov decided to throw in Finland in this scenario as well, though it's not strictly part of Scandinavia. Culturally, Scandinavia grew from the region of Scania, initially Danish but later on Swedish territory. Of course, this scenario wants to see how the militaries and economies could fare in a war. So it's a fight to the death, or surrender. Four Nordic countries fight as one. The war starts suddenly, there is no outside interference, no nukes are used and the starting morale is the same for all. Finland would obviously be the most exposed. It shares a long border with Russia and lacks strategic depth. It would need rapid reinforcements. But the other countries are not that close, actually. To move tens or hundreds of thousands of troops with equipment quickly, roads and rail are pretty much the only options. And going up north takes time. Of course, Russia too is huge, but most of Russia's troops are already geared Respect. to defend its western Small. borders. Russia Insect. has almost 45% of its entire... Small. Insect. Respect. Small. Insect. Forcing, go ahead. And click my fucking link. Forsen, Forsen, okay, Forsen. No further links. And click my fucking link. Forsen. There are military the stations less than a thousand miles from Finnish borders. As mentioned, Russia's active military is much larger. But comparing numbers is always a tricky job. Active army units don't represent all of the units available. There's also Marines, Airborne, various joint military units, etc., which are often not cited in basic figures. Adding all those in, the figures become a bit different, though perhaps favoring Russia even a bit more. But the two sides don't even have the same defense systems in place. Russian forces don't really have a big reserve system. Most of their forces are active duty soldiers. And most of those are professional soldiers while all the Scandinavian countries are very much tailored around their reserve units. As the rest of the Scandinavian countries try to rush in their troops to aid Finland, Russia would try to prevent those reinforcements from coming in. By sea, the clearest route would be from Denmark and Sweden to the Finnish western coastline. It's not a big distance, but managing to keep the ports operating under Russian airstrikes would be a challenge and the Baltic Sea itself might be quite dangerous to traverse. The Russian Baltic fleet is fairly large. While most of its ships are under a thousand tons, they're suitable for the Baltic Sea. The other countries would assemble a force of their own, of course. Of the four, the Finnish Navy is the most defensive in nature, but all four countries would try hard to secure those sea lanes to Finland. Submarine-wise, they're quite ahead of the Russian Baltic fleet with their coastal anti-ship missile units and the surface ship fleet, which is on average more modern than Russian ships, they might be able to hold the Russian ships at bay for as long as Russia doesn't enjoy air superiority. But getting ships to Finland would also be hard if various islands en route are taken, and that's something that Russia might very well try. Sweden's Gotland Island, and especially the Åland Islands between Finland and Sweden, might see masses of Russian airborne units. Of course, Russia is likely to risk that only after it concludes it can control the skies enough to keep such units supplied. But perhaps a bigger target for the Russian Airborne Corps, which is the biggest in the world and considered the elite tip of the spear of Russian forces, would be to sever the northern routes into Finland. Since they can't hold on indefinitely, those airborne units would need to be relieved by the regular army, fighting their way through from the east. Such a move, if successful, would sever the two biggest routes through Finland, from north to south. While the ground war is heating up, as troops get gathered and slowly start pushing over the borders, the air war would already be in full swing. Russia has the most of its air forces positioned in the west, and unlike the ground troops, 
some of which might need weeks to relocate from the far east to near Finland, oh man, the air crew, personnel and question. planes could be relocated far quicker. Norwegian and show. Danish air forces would too need to relocate, probably to Sweden, so they are close enough to react in a timely fashion to Russian air force incursions. All combined, the Scandinavian air forces are potent, but visibly smaller than their opponent, which eclipses them almost five times over. All of Scandinavia's combat planes can be used for air combat. They're also on average a bit more modern, but they're also smaller, which limits their capabilities. Over a third of the Russian fleet is simply not suited to air combat at all. Sheer Russian numbers would mean the Scandinavians would need every single plane for interceptions. Even so, it's unlikely the blue side would enjoy a great kill ratio, as its own airfields would often be under attack. The Russian air bases would mostly be well protected by a wall of air defenses, even if Blues could afford to occasionally use some planes for attacks. Russia has a massive number of air defense systems, and they are quite modern. The Russians would also have to deal with Scandinavian air defenses, but those are all systems of limited reach. The blue side would require all hands on deck, including tasking all of their ships with air defenses with defending the Baltic Sea airspace that would leave Norway quite exposed to the Russian northern naval fleet, but not doing it might prove to be detrimental to the whole war effort. Various short-range systems would All also right, be in play, but those minutes. would more Tell likely deal with outcome. helicopters and low-flying planes on attack missions. Despite all those air defenses and the fact some of the blue pushing their way through icy routes up north, both Russian fleets have only active duty vessels listed, so various submarines and their sole carrier undergoing major maintenance are not listed here. There's also enough amphibious assault ships that the Norwegian Svalbard Islands, which are normally demilitarized, would get taken without much effort. Islands in the Lofoten and Vesteralen archipelagos would too likely be quite hard to hold onto for Norway. If the Scandinavians would go all in to keep those, it's likely other parts of the very long Norwegian coastline would fall to Russia. It would just be impossible to find the manpower to defend it all at once, especially with the grave situation in Finland requiring huge Eastern Sweden would be very hard for Russia due to terrain. Eastern Sweden is fairly flat and would better suit the Russian mass armored formations, but most of Sweden is covered in forests so a painstakingly slow advance with ample firepower support would still be in order for the Russians, unless they want to lose 10 soldiers for each opposing one in various forest ambushes. Perhaps by the end of year one, the Russians could move the front line almost to Stockholm itself, after suffering several times higher casualties than the Scandinavians. Overall, the casualties would likely dwarf those of Winter War, but the question of who would be winning the war would have an obvious answer. The only real chance the Scandinavians would have long term is if somehow the Russians suffered horrific morale after all their casualties, with high desertion rates and unwillingness to participate in further war efforts. While at the same time the blue side would have to maintain unusually high morale, despite the horrible odds. The most likely outcome would be, given unlimited time, a Russian victory, but paid with horrible, horrible casualties. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Say 20 minutes and ask me. Uh, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment on what you want to see next.